Welcome to AgriAware Farm Walk and Talk 2020. Sustainability is the key topic for this year's Farm Walk and Talk, and improving sustainability on Irish farms is the key topic for the 2021 Leaving Cert Ag Science Syllabus. We'd like to thank UCD Lines for hosting us here today. I would like to welcome you all here to Lines Farm uh, this morning. Unfortunately, because of the precautions around the COVID-19, you cannot be here in person. But we will put all these presentations up on the UCD uh, social media sites and you'll be able to view them from the luxury of your own home. I hope you enjoy these video resources and I look forward to seeing you in the future. I wish you every success in your future prayers. My name is Tommy Boland. I'm Professor of Sheep Production and Ruminant Nutrition in the School of Agriculture and Food Science in University College Dublin. Uh, today at Lyons Research Farm, I'm going to be talking to you about the Irish sheep industry and the research work we conduct here at Lyons to support that sheep industry. Today we're on a research farm, Lyons Research Farm, which is located just outside of Dublin city centre. And you join us in the busiest week of the sheep year. Uh, the week we have here is, is lambing. Uh, we have 360 ewes on the farm and this week over the eight days, seven, eight days, we will see about 290 to 300 of those ewes uh, give birth. It's a really important part of what we do here at the research farm. Uh, but before I start to talk about that, I'll just give you some context around the Irish sheep industry. And nationally, we have about 2.6 to 2.7 million breeding ewes. They are split across approximately 36,000 farmers and the average flock size in Ireland is 107 ewes. Now that is very small by international standards, uh, but we are actually the fourth largest exporter of sheep meat globally. So considering our very small population, 2.7 million breeding ewes, out of a global population of about 1 billion ewes, it's quite an impressive statistic to export, uh, be the fourth largest exporter of sheep meat. Those sheep meat exports are valued about 300 million euros annually and our main markets would include the United Kingdom and the, Euro the European Union. So our systems in Ireland, we are split between hill sheep farming and lowland sheep farming. And our flock here at Lyons would be a mid-season lambing flock. A mid-season lambing flock basically means that the ewes give birth uh, in March. So our ewes were mated back in the middle of October in 2019. Gestation length, our pregnancy in a sheep lasts for approximately five months. And that brings us uh, to this point here today where we are right in the middle of the lambing season. The sheep we have around us here on the farm, they're split into three different breed types. Um, our breeds on the farm are Belclare Cross, Clen Cross, which is a native Welsh breed, and the Mule. The mule is a cross between a blue-faced Leicester ram and a black-faced mountain ewe. Now these sheep would not be typical of the type of sheep which appear on Irish farms. Only about 10% of the ewes in the country would be represented by the three breeds of sheep I have just named here. The reason we have selected these breeds of sheep uh, is for their, A, their prolificacy, or in other words, the number of lambs they would give birth to in a given year, and B, their good mothering instincts and good mothering ability. Our research has surely, clearly shown that if we can increase the number of lambs born per you and the number of lambs weaned per you, we increase the sustainability and the efficiency of our sheep production systems. So our research work here at the moment, and it's a project that our PhD student John Higgins is working on, is to compare these three different prolific breeds of sheep in terms of their mothering instincts, their mother ability, their milk production ability, uh, their feed efficiency, and the performance of their progeny uh, from birth until slaughter. The main product we produce on our sheep farms is meat, as I've already referenced for export, and we're going to look at which of the three maternal breeds is most efficient at producing that meat. Now, as I said, the three breed types are all prolific breeds. Uh, our average litter size this year is two, but individual yews within a flock can have one, two, three, four, or in some cases, five lambs at any given lambing time. The research we're conducting at the moment is looking, as I mentioned, at enhancing the sustainability of our, of our sheep production systems. Traditionally in Ireland, sheep uh, will graze pasture, many will be housed during the winter, and during that winter housing period, they will receive conserved grass or conserved forage and some concentrates. A lot of 
costs are involved in this type of production system. It costs of concentrate feed, costs of purchasing nitrogen fertilizer to grow the grass, and so on. Our research is looking at reducing these costs or perhaps even eliminating some of these costs. What we're trying to do is to develop a sward and a grassland mix uh, which will produce a lot of herbage and support animal performance without the requirement for a lot of fertilizer and subsequently reduce the need to feed a lot of concentrates to our sheep. And that will be part of the research we're conducting here in 2020 and 2021. As uh, we have such a strong focus on sustainability, we're also going to measure methane emissions from the sheep which are grazing these swords. Um, we, we're all very familiar uh, both in the popular press and the scientific press around the challenges that methane production poses, uh, particularly in Ireland. Uh, so our hypothesis is that our, our alternative forages, uh, which contain legumes and herbs in addition to grasses, will actually result in the sheep producing a lower quantity of methane each day and a lower quantity of methane for every kilo of meat produced. Again, further enhancing the sustainability of our sheep and our pasture-based production systems. Another important aspect of our alternative forage research are our multi-species swords, uh, which we're looking at this year, is the role for improving soil health. The herbs and the legumes which we're going to include in our pastures, there, some of those species and some of those varieties are very deep rooting. So they will reach down further into the soil horizon. They will draw carbon deeper down into the soil, but they will also draw nutrients up from deeper in the soil horizon, uh, particularly trace elements, which we know will have a beneficial effect on animal health. So that's a, just a quick summary of our research and what's happening here on the farm uh, this week during lambing uh, 2020 at Lyons. Okay, so this show, I've been observing it here in the lambing shed for about two hours. Um, it's, in that time, she hasn't progressed. So the initial sign of lambing was the appearance of the water bags. And since those water bags initially appeared, the O hasn't actually progressed onwards in the, in the process of lambing. We, we would have expected her to have delivered her lambs in the two hours. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to intervene. I'm going to, have a, going to do a manual examination to see how the lambs are presented and to see if they're ready to be delivered. So the first thing you'll notice is I'm wearing gloves. Uh, it's really important from a hygiene perspective. Um, that we don't introduce any bacteria and any infection into the uterus of the ewe when we're assisting. So I have gloves on to pre pre prevent that from happening. I also have placed some lubrication on my arm just so that it reduces the friction. So what I need to do now is restrain the ewe and I'll actually just begin the physical examination. Okay, so I've, I've passed my hand into the uterus and as I said, the ewe had, begin, had begun lambing about two hours ago, and I can see now why she hasn't progressed. The two front feet are presented, so that's normal. The normal delivery of a lamb is the two feet followed by the head, but in this case, the head is twisted back along the side of the lamb's body, and it's actually almost impossible for the lamb to be delivered in that fashion. So what I'm trying to do now is to correct <coughs> that malpresentation, and I have moved the lamb's head along and it's now sitting correctly on top uh, it's sitting correctly on top of the two front feet so i will try now to deliver that lamb hopefully you can see now the two front feet are just coming moving out along here so i'm applying a little bit of traction just a little bit of gentle pressure to aid the movement of the lamb out and now in a moment you will see the nose of the lamb appear so here now we can see the nose beginning to appear. So I'm going to continue to apply some gentle pressure on the legs and I'll work with the U as she's contracting. So I can feel when the contractions are going to come. I apply a little bit of pressure and now the next contraction I expect will have this lamb delivered. Normally you position yourself behind the ewe. Now there we go, the head is out. So once you get the head, that's usually the broadest part of the lamb. And once the head is delivered, you would expect the rest of the delivery to progress as normal. So the lamb now, as you can see, it's shaking its head. That's in an effort to reduce all that, or to remove all that fluid from the lung. And we'll just gently, and it's very important to be gentle in this process, we'll gently assist the lamb in passing out. And there we go, see the lamb is shaking his head now immediately. 
will turn the ewe around and she will start to tend that lamb. So this is really important in nature. First of all, this action, it dries off the lamb to prevent that lamb suffering from hypothermia. You can see she's pawing at the lamb to in attempt to wake up that lamb to get the lamb to start to attempt to stand. Bear in mind, in nature, sheep are a prey animal. So you can imagine a newborn lamb lying still on the ground like this is a very nice meal for a predator. So the ewe is licking the lamb to dry him off to prevent hypothermia. She might paw at him with her foot uh, in order to, to wake him up to get that lamb up and going so he can get stand, suckle and begin to follow the ewe around. Within about 15 minutes, you would expect this lamb to be standing and attempting to suckle the ewe. And you can see here, she's giving, her, giving them great encouragement to do that. This particular breed of sheep, she's referred to as a mule. She's a cross between a blue-faced Leicester ram and a black-faced mountain ewe. And one of the important traits and one of the key characteristics of this breed of sheep is that they're very good mothers. They have really good maternal instincts and they are very prolific. What I mean by prolific is they can have a large number of lambs at a single birth time. So twos, threes, and even fours in some cases are not unusual. We had a sheep here on the farm earlier this week which actually gave birth to six live lambs. And while she wasn't a mule, she was one of the other prolific strains we have on the farm. So I think that ewe has been scanned for two lambs. All our ewes are scanned in mid-pregnancy so we know firstly if they're pregnant and then secondly how many lambs they're actually carrying. So what I'll do now is I'll just check to see uh, the, if the second lamb is ready to be delivered. You will note at all times I kept this glove clean. I didn't put it onto the straw or onto the gates because again, this is going to be going back into the uterus and we don't want to risk introducing any in infection. So again, the second lamb is also malpresented and we have almost the opposite situation in this case. The head is presented uh, but there are no legs to be, to be felt. So what I will just, it's quite a simple situation to solve once you're familiar with lambing, uh, but it does take practice to become familiar with it. So what I have done now, I've moved my hand along the lamb's neck and I've located the legs on either side of the body. And again, very carefully, I've brought those legs forward. So we have the lamb now, the two legs are coming and the head is sitting on top of those two legs. So internally, I've just moved that lamb through the pelvis. So the legs are, have now moved through the pelvis and I'm just checking again to make sure the head is following. So here we see again, the two legs are coming. So again, and that little bit of blood is normal and the head is coming again. The second lamb is all, almost always easier to deliver than the first. You see that lamb is moving out slowly. Again, always nice and gentle. You can see some of the fluid in the nose and mouth, which we need to remove. Again, a little shake of the head by the lamb. A little cough to clear out the lungs. Just move this lamb around to his mother. Again, she will start to tend that lamb immediately. So we have a nice set of twin lambs uh, delivered from this mule ewe. I suspect those lambs are approximately six to seven kilos birth weight each, which would be on the larger side for twins. And again, you see a very good mother closely tending the lambs, licking them to dry them off and using her foot in an attempt to, you know, to liven them up, to wake them up. So you see the lambs are shaking their heads, clearing out the fluid uh, from the lungs to allow them to start to breathe. Um, there's one final task then you should always perform when you're lambing a ewe like this. Uh, we need to check to make sure that her, her udder or her mammary gland is functioning correctly. Uh, so the udder is split into two sides or it has two teats. Uh, when the ewe is dry, 
the end of the teeth will seal over with a wax seal. Uh, so when you use not lactating, it'll seal over with a wax seal to prevent, uh, prevent bacterial ingress into the uterus so, or into the, into the udder. So we'll just try to remove that wax seal. There we go, we can see that the, the milk is flowing. Very good colostrum. It's almost the consistency of custard. So a nice flow of colostrum here from the udder. A thick uh, yellow substance. So that's a really good source of nutrients, very high in energy, uh, very high in protein. And really importantly for the newborn lamb, that's full of immunoglobulins, which will give that lamb immunity from disease in early life. So that's what we want. Uh, two good lambs, milk in the udder. The only thing we'll need to be careful about with this ewe is these teats um, are a little bit on the large side. Uh, so they're almost uh, bigger than the lamb's mouth. So we'll just need to be careful and keep an eye on this ewe and our lambs over the next 24 hours to ensure that these lambs can actually suckle these large teats.